I, I agree. I agree, first and foremost. I think ultimately the shape was always going to look a 3-2-5 kind of thing. And I agree. I think he could have done something just to mix up and ask a different question. You could do this because Martinez likes to get nearer to goal. Trossard has played as a wing-back. So you could even actually just make it a flat 3-5-1 or 3-2-5. And that's it. You're chasing a goal and you're going for it. He's done yeah. that before, Arteta. Saka's played as a wing-back, so why not? The other thing I think he really could have done. So if we're assuming Martinez comes off because he wasn't having his best game and Tierney comes on, we just bring him on here. Let's bring Trossard into this space now. I think, again, you could have achieved this by simply having, and if we just go to the tools here so I can try and illustrate this as best as possible. Yeah, it's probably the way to do it. You could probably have, this is your front three. This is your midfield three. And this as your back four. Now, you know, again, we always know that the starting 11 on paper looks different when it actually goes out there. But we've seen before Tierney overlapping. We've seen a wide player tucking inside. That's very Smith Rowe-esque in this team. And we've seen Xhaka, but this time Zinchenko, dropping into the space to build a party. So he could have kept a lot of the principles he loves. Two deep-lying playmakers, Zinchenko being one of them, who's got a brilliant threaded pass from there, although we're going to talk about him and the team's passing in a minute. Trossard getting into central, more creative areas, as we know he can do. But Tierney asking a different question of Coleman and going around the outside. And even if you do have, if we just clear all this, even if you do have Trossard, in the 1v1 with Coleman, and a few times Marte got into that battle, wouldn't it be great if, yeah, Iwobi might track Tierney all the way, but at least you've taken a man out of the game, and at least you're opening some space. And I felt Arteta could have asked different questions, um, but also when you look at the you know, fact against Man United, look at that winning goal against Man United. Mm. It's, it's Trossard getting the ball centrally and Zinchenko overlapping. Yeah, 100%. So I do think we just failed to ask enough questions um, of the you know of, of Everton but you know hindsight's a wonderful thing but I think a lot of people in game were thinking just just throw something else at them because um, I thought this was really disappointing now I was watching the game and I thought we looked so sloppy passes were undercooked under hit we were I mean in credit to Everton they're pressing us really well I think forced us into errors a lot but I was looking at it and I thought well let's look at our season average for five of our Deep creators, deep lying playmakers who'd see a lot of the ball, who set the tempo for Arsenal. And let's compare their pass percentage against Everton to their season average. Now, Zinchenko's was down 82% from his season average of 87%, but the rest were actually Partey's was better, White's was better, Xhaka's was the same, and Jorginho's was worse, but not by a lot. And I thought, my eyes are not lying to me. I know that we looked sloppy, so what is it? And then I narrowed it down to short passing versus Everton compared to our season average. Zinchenko down massively to 83% from 94. Partey the same, but White down 5%. Xhaka down 3%. By the way, these small percentages make a big difference. And Jorginho down a massive 11% as well. We just had no ability to... Oh, what's our game about? Passing, control, fluidity. It's moving players around. Yes, they're a very physical side, Everton. They did a lot to stop us. But if you've got the ball, it doesn't matter how physical they were, but we couldn't get into a rhythm Fine. at all. No, I think now, I tell you what, at the time it didn't frustrate me because I thought they've been causing us problems all day from set pieces. It can happen, okay? Mm. It can happen. Then I looked at it back in more detail. Now, we sit here and we try to, you know, as people just watch the game, you know, yeah. we try to analyse what we think is happening. When it comes to two things, goalkeeping and set pieces, I try to offer not too much, I try to not to offer too much judgement because... I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like for set-piece coaches on the field. I don't know what it's like to be... I don't know what it's like to play in the Premier League full stop. But this is one thing I really can't offer too much on. But I can say when some things don't look right. And what doesn't look right to me is that this is probably the fifth corner, sixth corner of the game, whatever it is. And what they've been doing before is whipping balls to that back post. Back post, back post, back post. And Arsenal approach this one with, first of all, all 11 players in the box, every single one of them in the box, they had five. Decore, Cody, Calvert-Lewin, Onana, Tarkovsky. They had five players. We had 10 outfielders there to deal with it, even rounds there to claim. They were actually worried about the counter-attack. Uh, Mikalenko, Gay and Awobi on the brink. McNeil taking the corner and Coleman just for the halfway line. So we've committed everything to defending this set piece. The other thing you then got, if we just play it, play it through slowly... Uh, we've got it here. I think we do. Right, so when this ball comes into the box and everyone's making the run and you sort of sense it's coming to the back post at this point. Tarkovsky's in a battle with Odegaard. I feel a little bit sorry for Odegaard because 
He's just always going to lose that battle. Yeah. He just is. Yeah. So that something's gone wrong in the arranging of who should be where. But you've got White, one of our best headers of the ball, at the front. You've got Xhaka sort of in the middle. And I get it. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. If that ball had come centrally, you want them there. But you've also got Zinchenko very central. And Saliba's the only one really at the back post who can do anything. But even then, he's not fully at the back post. It's, it's gone over his head. And Tarkovsky's been able to charge it with the best kind of pressure on him, being Jorginho and Odegaard, if anything. It's a crowded area, it's you, a good header. You think we've got the wrong players in the wrong part of the tunnel? Again, hindsight's really wonderful. It's really easy for me to say, you should have all been there because that's where we scored from. But it does feel like we had, again, if we had Saliba and Gabriel there and then they score at the near post, everyone's going, what are they doing there? It's, it's, all I know is they scored and our best headers of the ball weren't where they should have been to head the ball. Whose fault that is, I don't know. Does it just happen? Maybe. But it just doesn't look right.